Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kyung Park from Implant Dental Clinic, South Korea. Today, I'm going to talk about the required fixation force of the implant. According to the bone quality and quantity, implant cases can be divided into four categories. For your reference, according to what I think, the criterion for the good bone quality is that it has more than D2 density and the good bone quantity means that it can accommodate the fixture with at least diameter of 3.3 mm and length of 10 mm at the frontage area, diameter of 3.8 mm at the premolar area, diameter of 4.3 mm at the molar area. In my previous lecture, I said the available fixation force of the implant can be divided, regarded as the sum of bone quality and quantity. So, each type is different in terms of the available fixation force. From the case of type 1 with both good to the case of type 4 with both bad. Let's take a look at picture for easier understanding. We can get the strongest available fixation force in Taiwan with both good, which allows us to plant the picture with a larger diameter than that of picture in type 2 with bad bone quantity. On the other hand, the available fixation force in type 3 and 4 is weaker than that in type 1 and 2 due to the bad bone quality. So, the available fixation force is the weakest in type 4 with bad bone quantity because we have to plant the picture with a smaller diameter than that of picture in type 3. So, the prone is implant in type 4 is the worst because the available fixation force is the most fundamental factor determining the lifespan of dental implant. But this is not everything. There are other factors affecting the lifespan of implant. Among them, proper selection of fixture is the most important matter. So it's recommendable decided after considering the available fixation force and required fixation force and the level of gingival immunity together. So let me talk about required fixation force today. The purpose of evaluating the required fixation force is to guess the amount of difference between the required and available fixation force of the implant. That's because that the available fixation force is usually smaller than the required fixation force in most cases. And if the fixation force is not enough to withstand the occlusal role, the lifespan of implant gets shortened. So we need to anticipate the amount of occlusal role that will be acting at the implant to be planted in order to guess the amount of difference between them. And eventually you can prolong the lifespan of implant by supplementing insufficient fixation force via these factors. Now let's look over how to evaluate required fixation force. We can evaluate the required fixation force by considering these factors that have a relation with occlusal road. So let's think about the occlusal road that will be acting at implant. The amount of occlusal road acting at implant can be divided into general occlusal road and local occlusal road. The occlusal road working in common and even of all teeth in the mouth is called the general occlusal road and also can be divided into the congenital and acquired occlusal road. On the other hand, the occlusal road working over only specific tooth is called the local occlusal road and variable because 
It depends on fixation force and occlusion of occluding and adjacent teeth and also control lateral side teeth. Therefore, when we perform an implant, we can evaluate the required fixation force after considering the general and local occlusion result load together. Now, let's take a look at the factors related to general occlusion load. First, looking at congenital occlusion load, there is no way to measure an accurate congenital occlusion load actually, but to guess it by considering these factors at the same time. Needless to say, it's natural the occlusion load acting on men and young people is bigger than the occlusion load on the woman and elderly. Of course, age changes year by year, but it's inevitable. So, age is considered as an innate factor at time of implantation. However, this is the general theory and there might be an individual difference. So it's worth to pay attention whether the corneal angle is well developed or not in the panoramic view. As you know, the corneal angle is the insertion of the masseter muscle, which is the most well developed masticator muscle and is attached here and contract strongly to this direction. So the occlusional force is the greatest at the molar area close to the corneal angle. Therefore, we can guess a person with such a well-developed corneal angle in panoramic view is born to be able to chew strongly and needs much more fixation force of implant than the average. However, it's a matter of only strength of occlusion road, so we need to con we not only strength of occlusion road but also the amount of occlusion road. For example, looking at the panoramic view, even though this patient is of middle age, the paleo is still good state without symptoms of peritonitis because there is no bone resorption and the bone level is maintained well. So it seems that this patient is born to be able to chew well for a long time thanks to the innate healthy paleo. And let's look at where the established bundle bones around root perimeters because of good bone quality in A, which make it possible to chew strongly and well for a long time. And also looking at root development, the long and diverse root with coverage make it possible to chew strongly and well for a long time too. Consequently, there would be a large amount of food road at the picture to be planted in the patient with these features, which means that required fixation force is bigger than the average. So, in order to make a possible huge implant for a long time, we need to get the fixation force enough to withstand the food road. However, it's not the end. We need to think about acquired occlusion road in addition. Suppose this patient is likes to buy strong and chew hard and tough food, then we have to get the more fixation force because the acquired occlusion road is concerning about the amount of occlusion road also, which depends on not only how strong the patient buys but also how long and how often the patient choose. So I say it's an additional occlusion road because it's about how to use implant regardless of what you're born with in. There is no way to measure accurate acquired occlusion road either. So I guess we through internal oral examination to find out characteristic signs such as multiple attritional facet, cracked teeth, fractured teeth, and occlusional habit of clenching. It's because that 
If the person have disposition and eating habit, they like to buy strong and chew hard and tough food and have have to have a good habit of crunching. You could find multiple signs of them of the remaining teeth. Another way to get acquired occlusal road is gathering the information about the patient during the process of call history taking process, such as first visit interview, asking about their dental history, and making a consulting list, etc., which helps to recognize patient disposition and habits also. Especially in the case of overnight bruxism, there is no way to withstand excessive large amount of occlusal road every night. I think it's better to notify the patient in advance that they cannot use the implant for a long time. Finally, summarizing about general occlusal road, if the amount of general occlusal road seems to be big, the required fixation force would be like to be big, which means that the required fixation force of implant to be planted is bigger than the average. On the other hand, except for the case of Taiwan, the available fixation force is usually smaller than the fixation force of original natural tooth due to the bad quality or quantity. So, when you perform an implant, there might be a difference between required fixation force and the available fixation force in most cases. However, under this basic circumstance, if the general occult load is bigger than the average, there might be a considerable amount of difference between them. Therefore, we need to try to compensate for the lack of fixation force via these factors. <laughs>